How do you choose the curriculum for your kids? I get this question so many times. So today's video, we're gonna go over how do you pick curriculum in homeschool for your kids? So we're gonna go over five steps that I've identified that would be very helpful for you in picking a curriculum. And then we're gonna talk about the different types of curriculum. The steps I'm gonna give you apply to all ages, but there might be a couple of little extra things when they get a little bit older and I will talk about that later. And before we start, I just want you to know that this can be a very overwhelming, especially if you're brand new to homeschooling, but I can guarantee you it's not that bad. So don't be intimidated by it. We're gonna get through this and then you're gonna figure out your own way. Okay, I wanna jump in here really quick. I've been editing the video and I wanna add some more context, things that you need to think about. Now, I'm talking a lot about just one child or you know maybe two, but I know a lot of you out there have multiple children that you are teaching and multiple ages. And what do you do? How do you pick a curriculum for that? There are unit studies out there, which mean you all as a family study a certain subject. And usually those are the subjects like history, geography, science, maybe music and art. And in those kind of unit study curriculums, there's going to be a lot of different activities for different ages. So look for those type of curriculums that if you have a lot of children and you want to just all do it together, um, look for the unit, st unit study style of curriculum. I remember so vividly bringing my kids home from public school and sitting them down and trying to recreate the public school system at our home. And how did that go? Not too good. My son was only a second grader and I noticed that he was a big time visual learner. He gravitated to the visual way of learning. He loved diagrams and graphs and pictures. The first area we need to look at is assessing your child's learning styles and their goals for the future. And sometimes it's not just one, it's multiple, but usually there is one that is dominant. And when you know your child's learning style, it makes it easier to pick curriculum because of certain things that stand out in those curriculums. And you may be asking, what are those learning styles that you're talking about? So you know most of the popular ones like visual, auditory, kinesthetic learning, but there are also some like reading and writing learners, social learners, solitary learners, logical and mathematical learners, and musical and rhythmic learners. Learning styles are important, but again, they're not everything. So let's go on to the next point. Another one of my children, they actually taught themselves to read. So his reading ability was a benefit to some of the kind of curriculum that he would use. He loved to read, he loved to write, he was very good at both of them. And so that kind of curriculum that had that was very beneficial for him, or at least he enjoyed and wasn't totally turned off by. Looking at the strengths and the weaknesses for your kids is not something that is that big of a deal, but it does come into play when you're looking at the whole of the curriculum. So in the example of my son being able to be a really good reader at a very young age, he was able to go in that direction to be more independent learner. But if I had another child that wasn't as good of a reader, I think I would maybe choose something different. I would choose something that had more visual and not just a whole bunch of reading and writing. Even if your children have weaknesses, it's not that we're going to avoid their weaknesses and just play to their strengths. No, we need that education to help bolster their weaknesses. Remember that in picking curriculum, there's a lot of variables to it. Maybe there's two that you're choosing from and one of them would be a little bit more um, desirable from your, your children. So that's why you're like, mm, I think I'm gonna go with this one. So what curriculums would be helpful for the different styles of learning? Well, if you have somebody that's a very visual learner, I would make sure your curriculum has lots of pictures or graphs or things that they with the eye can understand rather than just hearing it or learning it. Now, if they learn by the auditory ways, they love to listen to books. They love to listen to people speak 
and they love to listen to maybe possibly music. So those kinds of things for auditory learners would be very, very helpful. Now let's talk about kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is just, they love to be involved. They learn by doing. If they're learning about Pharaoh, how to make a paper mache mummy, things like that. Now there are a lot of curriculums out there and I'm gonna use story of the world as an example, as a history curriculum that uses a whole bunch of different types of learning kinesthetic, auditory, and visual, plus probably more. Now that's just an example of one type of curriculum that can satisfy a lot of different learning styles if you're teaching a lot of kids. Along with this, it's also good to talk with your kids and kind of see what their future goals are for themselves. My daughter, she loved to sew and I don't sew. <laughs> I found classes for her to take sewing and when she went to college she actually went into that field of designing clothing and that's why it's really important to focus on their goals and what they want now this may not apply to elementary school children this is more for kind of more high school age kids and even middle school now don't get me wrong your younger kids can make goals and make plans for the future too you're, they're never too young to start talking about who they want to be and what they want to do in life. Now the second area we want to look at, and this is kind of what you've been looking for, right, is researching the different curriculum options. So that first part of thinking about your kids, now we're down to the second part of the curriculum. This is your time to start to research the different options that are out there. The good news is there are so many options, but the bad news is there are so many options. <laughs> now, when I first started, there weren't as many options as there are now. It was just a little bit easier to pick the, the curriculum because there weren't so many different options. But nowadays, there are so many different types and out there for homeschool moms. It is amazing. It, it's just a huge, huge benefit to be homeschooling nowadays. <laughs> now, you need to be looking for the different specific types for your kids. So let's say that you're looking for a high school science curriculum. Make sure that it's for high school students. Don't be giving a sixth grader a high school curriculum for science. Now the thing is if you're trying to decide where your child fits in a curriculum, what grade they're in and you're not really sure, a lot of curriculums will have placement tests and your kids can take that will determine where they need to start in whatever grade or level of the curriculum. And the people that own the curriculum are very helpful in knowing where to start your children. So just, you know, ask questions, especially of the curriculum that you're buying. And then another thing when you're looking at curriculum and you're researching it is make sure you read a lot of testimonials about it. Read what other people think their experiences. Now, a lot of times you're going to find a pattern in these testimonials, you know, like I loved it, but my kids got bored really easy. So I would always make sure that you can find people that have reviewed them and look for them. Like if there's a certain curriculum, look for that brand and then reviews like on Google. Now I like to check out anybody that's on, you know, YouTube, or has a blog that reviews things because I like to see inside the curriculum. I like to see how it's set up. Now, also, if you know people that have used it, then ask them what they liked about it and what they disliked about it. Those two questions are really important. I don't know if you know who Kathy Duffy is, but she has a great website that she does a lot of reviews of curriculum. She's had this website for a long time because I've used it many, many times, many, many years ago. Even with this great website from Kathy Duffy, you still should do your research and do your homework. And I think that part is sometimes the hardest. You are the one that is going to have to choose about what kind of curriculum that you need. And your children are different than my children. And your needs as a homeschool mom are different than my needs as a homeschool mom. And so we have to figure that out. That's why it can be a little intimidating and a little tough at first because you don't exactly know where or how to start this whole thing about homeschooling curriculum. Now the third area that is really more important for teens in the high school years is the accreditation of these curriculums. This is the third area we wanna look at. So many people are worried about 
the curriculums being accredited, meaning that they fulfill credits in the public school system or for college. And you really don't have to worry about this until the high school years if that's the road you're going down. And I just have a couple of online accredited high school schools that I looked up. And some of these I had known of, but a lot of them I didn't know. So there's so many options out there. Let me just name a few. Stanford Online High School. It's a rigorous curriculum designed for academic gifted students and it's accredited by Western Association of Schools and Colleges. So that's one. Then there is a Connections Academy that is a tuition free online public school serving grades K through 12 and that's accredited also. And then there's um, K-12 International Ad Academy, there's Laurel Springs School, and more. Um, I there, There's a lot. So these are the options you have if you want to go the accredited way for getting a high school diploma or just having a little bit more of a rigorous and planned out homeschool for your high school teenagers, your middle schoolers, and obviously even your elementary school age kids. A lot of people in homeschooling, they do high school work, but they really don't need a high school diploma because you don't really need one to get into college nowadays. Yes, you need a transcript to show colleges of what the things that you've done and what kind of grades you've gotten to see if you can do college work. My kids that have gone on to college never had a high school diploma. Now, they went down the road of getting a GED, which that was what I chose back then. And now my kids, I really don't require them to get a GED, at least my younger ones. My older ones are probably pretty mad about that. But <laughs> I don't think they need it because some of the colleges that my kids get into, they don't really need either a high school diploma or a GED. They just want a transcript of all the things that they've done in that last four years, ninth grade to 12th grade and that's kind of all that they need. The accreditation for the younger schools is not necessary. If you are interested in it for high school, that is something that you need to be aware of when picking the curriculum. Let me say a little bit more about accreditation. If you're, you or your teen really wants to get into a big school that's a little bit harder to get into, then I would definitely go down the road of some type of accredited high school program meaning an online high school program or a, a community college kind of program. That way it's a little bit easier to get into these bigger colleges as there's so much competition. And it's a little easier on you, mom and dad, and the student will make sure that they're ready and prepared for college work. Now, if your child wants to go to college, but you're not really wanting one of the big colleges, maybe a smaller community college at first, you know, you could be a lot more flexible with your curriculum choices because you don't need to worry about some of the accreditation and the different things that colleges, big colleges want. And one more thing about colleges is if you have a favorite college that's like a family tradition that all of your kids have gone to or you have gone to in the family, start early communicating with that university or college Ask them, what does it take to get a homeschool student into that college? What do they need to do? When do they need to be doing it? Those kinds of things will make your life so much easier as you navigate the high school years. When I was homeschooling some of my older kids, it was so funny because everybody would say, are they getting enough social? And I would stare into their eyes and I would say, are you serious? Are you serious about that question? Because my teenagers had an overabundance of social activities. This is one of the next things I want you to think about in picking a curriculum for your kids. How does it go along with the pace that your children will go and the different extracurricular activities that they have? I said that right. You know, as they get older, they are going to want to do other things. And if they get involved in different homeschool co-ops or different city events and sports, you got to make sure that the curriculum they're choosing will be able to work with them in the pace that they go. How is it adaptable to being an advanced student and sometimes a more remedial student? Take for instance science. Science some students love. They just love it and they get it and they enjoy it and they're done. 
And then there's some that they don't get it and it's hard for them and they're not quite understanding how this you know, kind of works. So sometimes picking a curriculum that has different levels of depth that you can go into is very helpful. Again, there are some kids that really like to go deep into subjects like say history. They really enjoy and get into history. But then there's some of them that just want the basics. You know, they just want to get through the, the curriculum. They just want to do the basics and that's okay too. So remember when picking curriculum that it's adaptable to your kids and how fast or slow they want to do it, how deep or shallow they want to go. There are different types of curriculums that can do this and then there are some that don't do it very well. This is something the new homeschoolers can overlook because they're not really familiar with how curriculums are made and they think that all curriculum is created equal. So if your kids like a lot of different options and how their curriculum is done and how the different assignments can be you know, finished, look for that. Look for those kind of curriculums that have that. So what does a customized curriculum really look like? What are the different curriculums? Well, I do have to say this. Most curriculums that are customizable are kind of eclectic meaning the mom picks and chooses each subject a different curriculum. So you'll choose a curriculum for math, a different one for history, a different one for English literature, a different one for grammar, and it's kind of a mishmash of different things. That's the more customizable curriculums. The boxed, ready to go, that they have their own curriculum for everything. Um, these are like the big curriculum companies. They are not as customizable. I just wanted you to realize that because sometimes when you first start, you kind of start with the boxed curriculums and that is totally good. That is what you probably should be doing if you are not very confident in what to choose. But as you get better and better as the years go on, then you start, can start to customize your curriculum for your kids so much more because you know what you want and what you don't want. And the fifth and final area that we need to think about is finding the curriculum that you want and then reviewing the materials as samples and having trial periods. You know, you can do trial periods with this curriculum. So you have to be very careful that when you find a curriculum, you have to go an extra step and make sure it really is what you want. Now, most curriculums out there, curriculum companies, they do offer like online that you can read a sample of this and that. Please do not buy it blindly. It's not very helpful. I have spent, I don't know, boatloads of money on curriculum. And a lot of it at the beginning of when I bought it was because I didn't know what I was doing. And it was kind of like a crutch. It was kind of like this crutch of, well, I don't know what I'm doing and so I'm just gonna buy all this curriculum. That's okay. It's okay to do that for the first little bit. Best case scenario is you find somebody that has it and you look at it. You go through it. You say, hey, can I take this book home with me? I'm just going to look at it and then I'll bring it back to you. I just don't want you to make the same mistake I have made multiple times of just buying curriculum without sampling it, without looking through it, without making sure it is something that my kids would really like. Another really great thing with this is get the feedback of your teenager. That's why it is really nice to get a hold of that curriculum without buying it and saying, hey, what do you think of this? Now this really applies wholeheartedly to your teens. If your teens out of the gate hate the curriculum that you buy, you know, it's not gonna work. You really need to get the feedback of your kids, especially your teens when you're buying curriculum for them because a lot of times the curriculum for teens is quite expensive if you're buying it new. Now with elementary school, it's not as important to have their buy into it because they don't necessarily know what they like and what they don't like. They don't really care one way or the other. And middle school, I would say yes, probably 50-50 it would be a good idea, especially if it's a hard subject. I would get their buy-in on it or just their opinion about it. And then of course, I should have said this at the very beginning, but make sure that it is compliant to your state's laws about homeschooling. We just have to cover all of our bases, right? As my homeschool moms, we have to make sure that what we have at home is comparable, which will probably be better, than at the public school system. And to find those out, go to hslda.org. Love that place. Love it, love it, love it. Homeschool moms, just remember, 
<laughs> that picking curriculum is kind of like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Now, if I have overwhelmed you, I really didn't mean to. But if you're just beginning and you're just starting, this is my absolute honest opinion, all right? Even with all those five things I've just talked about. If you're just starting and you just don't know for sure and you don't have a lot of time, all right, or money, what I would do is I would just pick a very basic, popular curriculum that's out there. Something that a lot of people enjoy. When a brand, a curriculum is popular, it's popular for a reason. And there are some things that work well for most everybody. When you find something that is, you know, people love and they like, it usually is a great starting point. And when you start with that basic curriculum, make sure that it possibly isn't too expensive. And then as you get stronger in picking curriculum year after year, you're gonna get really good at knowing what is good and what isn't. Your first couple of years, you're just getting your feet wet. And it's okay to have a very basic kind of curriculum that doesn't have all the bells and whistles. So what are some of those basic out of the box curriculums that you can start with as a homeschool mom? Now you have to remember that some of them are Christian based, some of them are secular based, all right? But there's a Becca sunlight curriculum. There's time for learning, which is an online BJU press homeschool, Oak Meadow, Calvert education, the good and the beautiful. These are all curriculums that are all inclusive, meaning they have all of the different subjects and you buy the whole thing for a year and that is all of your curriculum. Sometimes that is very desirable for homeschool moms, especially when they're just starting for the first time. There is one thing, planning is very important of knowing what curriculums you need. And it's very helpful to know what kind of subjects do teenagers in the ninth to 12th grade years and how you plan for those four, four years. Now, if you need that for the high school years, you need to watch this next video of mine. We'll see you on the next video. Toodles. So even with this great 